Hello and welcome to ID Sports Baseball. Play ball! Welcome back. As you can see, we're down a Mongo. He's busy bowling for charity of some sort, which is good for him, actually. We should learn from him. Be charitable. Um, so uh, this past week was All-Star Week. <laughs> um, we talked about this last episode. If you want to hear mine, Mongo's, and John's full take on it, also John's here. He's the other guy. You should know that by now. You've been watching us long enough. Um, we're not too fond of the All Stars <laughs> and how it's handled. Um, baseball should. Oh, you know what we didn't mention, and I actually think is something we should talk about. Baseball, get rid of one is mandatory from every team. Not every team deserves an All Star. They don't. Uh, and but anyway, I, I get, I get, I get it. You want, don't want anyone to. You want to like honor like the chance that like there is a player who on a bad team who is just not going to get voted in. So I do understand the reason. Um, but maybe then have vote, you know, coaches vote like the rest of the roster. That's not the starters, you know, like the rest, like, like basketball does. Yeah. Anyway, that's neither here nor there nor anywhere. Um, all-star uh, game happened. The National League won for the first time in 1,000 years. So congratulations. <laughs> uh, no, it's been 11 years, which is still a very long time. Um, but also, uh, not to nothing. There's nothing special. It's the All-Star yeah. game, uh, and there's nothing for me to note. John, anything you want to note? No, I mean it was. Not a memorable one, I could say that. It wasn't really that memorable. Yeah, home run derby happened. That wasn't too bad. I liked the home run derby. That was probably the best. Seeing Rodriguez hit 41 home runs in the first round, that was to knock off Pete Alonso. That was a perfect one. Vladdy ended up winning the whole thing, which is nice to see a father and son win a home run derby. So, I like it. Maybe... Next year they could do have like a a retired home run derby of like David Ortiz, Alex Rodriguez, whoever wants like retired players to hit home runs. Well, they won't let A Rod in because he got accused oh, of yeah, well, but not I, accused. I he admitted to it. He, he, he yeah. admitted to it. I was just uh, saying, Ortiz was at one point uh, allegedly linked to it, and that went away very quietly. Yeah. Um. Oh well. I don't. I I think at this point it's it's part of baseball. Those players yeah. who were should be in the Hall of Fame. Who were yes. you know acu you know, accused and those who admitted to it. Just let them in the Hall of Fame. It's it, like the whole everyone did it. It's it's not. You can't compare it to the peers of the past because they didn't have that choice. If they had that choice, they probably would have done it too. Let's be honest. You're trying to get as much. You're trying to maximize how much money you can make. And let's be honest. I uh, my camera disappeared. Hold on. I have no idea what happened. Give me a second. Hi guys. I mean, Barry Bonds deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Like, there's no doubt about it. Who's telling me that you could walk so many times in one season, hit that many home runs for through his career? I'm back. Sorry about that. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> that was weird. Uh, it's not a perfect system. Uh, anyway, I don't remember what we were talking about. Let's. Uh, that's the All Stars. Let's move on to uh, the A's. The A's brought up two prospects. They brought up Gilaf. Yeah. 
Zach Giloff or Geloff, whatever you want to pronounce it. And Soderstorm? Stroderstorm, yeah. Stroderstorm, yeah. I don't know how to pronounce any of those names, but those both sound right to me. Yep. <laughs> um, I still don't know anything about prospects. It is something that I never fully understood. Uh, I remember at points the Yankees had like six shortstops that were supposed to replace Derek Jeter, and none of them did. And they were supposed well, to be these amazing shortstops. Right one of them is kind of. Doing but Derek's it. been retired like 10 yeah. years. That's, that's, that's a point. My point is, I mean, okay, while look, he was still on look, the Yankees, they had like a billion shortstops prospects oh, yeah. coming through. And they were all supposed to be amazing guys who were going to replace Derek Jeter and not a single one re- replaced him even on another team. Well, maybe that's not true, but. Yeah, well. Yeah. He, he wasn't. He, the, I don't understand how <laughs> prospects ranking works. Someone does. I don't. John knows about actual prospects and things. So he'll take this away. So starting off. With the, the A's brought up their one and three, so this is their top three guys basically. Uh, Tyler Shodasum has been mashing up uh, triple A all year in 69 games. He has 71 hits, 15 doubles, three triples, 20 home runs, and 59 RBIs. 20 walks is fine, he's not going to be a walk type of guy. He has a 300 on base and a 536 slugging. He's been incredible, and it's about time he deserves to be the call of up. And What's I don't think position? he's going to – what? What position? Uh, first base catcher. He's basically to play first base or catcher. I'm guessing it's going to be first base because that's their really downfall of that team right now. So I think first base will be where he plays for the seasons. And Zach, he has been – the same basically uh, in 69 games as well. He has 80 hits, 20 doubles, one triple, 12 home runs, 44 RBIs, and 41 walks, and 20 stolen bases, 300 average, a 400 on base percentage, and a 529 slugging. So he's also been killing it, and he deserves to be called up, and he will be playing shortstop for them for years to come. So mm-hmm. they got two. Good prospects. It's not going to do much for them. They're still going to lose games, but it's nice to see some new faces up in the athletics organization getting a chance. Yeah, I mean, you got to you got to give this fans something to cheer about, especially with how crappy their ownership is. Yep. Um, but also at the same time, they're in a weird spot, right? They want to support the they want to support Oakland and make yep. the owner realize they're making a mistake. But at the same time, by doing so, you're supporting the owner who you're mad about because he can't put together a competent team. Um, or when he gets competent parts, ships them out for, you know, pennies to the dollar. Um, you know, this this goes back a long time. This is nothing new. The, this, the, you know, even in during the Moneyball era when they were a good team, did they? I don't even think they won a single championship. They were just better than people thought they would be and they essentially put analytics into all sports because of that um but now that becomes irrelevant right if everyone's doing it it doesn't matter if you were the first one to do it if you're not if if it's you know if other teams are going to just do it better or are still going to willing to spend the money ultimately money spending is is important in all aspects of sports especially baseball one without an actual true salary cap they have that soft cap um, you know, I mean, we're going to talk about the, this team shortly, so we might as well talk about them now. The team on my hat, the New York Yankees, they are not afraid to spend money. I mean, they, they're more afraid than they used to be, but yep. even so, you know, we're talking about them. We'll be talking about how they're a bad team while they're six games above 500. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, it is taken with a grain of salt here, all, all that hate them. <laughs> hate we'll be talking about them uh, momentarily. Um. But at the same time, you know, they're they're switching to a more analytical analytics. They, you know, they're spend and they're willing to spend the money. The Red Sox are willing to spend money. Uh, Astros, the other the LA teams, their teams are just willing to spend the money that Oakland never was. And even I, when they moved to to Las Vegas, eventually, 
in like however many years that is. I don't see the owner just magically deciding he's going to spend his money because why would he, why is he going to? He's now in a new city. He's going to be breaking in tons of money because for whatever reason, teams have just, well, I know the reason was because sports betting was against the law, so they didn't want to tempt people by having uh, sporting events in the gambling capital of, of the world. Um, so I understand that. Um, I don't think that, like John said, these prospects are going to, you know, tilt the needle one way or the other in terms of this team being a contender. What What is their record? Their record is 25, a wonderful and, 25 and 70. They're still worse uh, in American League. Are they worse in baseball? Uh, yes, they're the worst in baseball. Congratulations, you're still the worst. <laughs> Let's move on to the main topic, the topic I was hinting at, the New York Yankees collapse. So let's take this lightly. Let me start off with this. The New York Yankees are 50 and 44 right now as of 7.39 p.m. on Monday, July 17th. Yep. Um, that is not a bad record. That is six games oh, above 500. They are the, the the thing that people are taking issue with is the fact that they're in last place in the in the American League East. This is the first time since 1992 that they have been in last place this late into the season. Um, I will say, I'm not as big of a. I mean, I, I will say this. This is something that the the, the Yankees that has been. Inevi- this was inevitable, right? The Yankees have not been been. It's been. If you really look at a lot of their off seasons recently, they're just not spending money on players outside of like one player here and there. Like they just did with Aaron Judge, they gave him all this money. A couple of years ago, they gave it to um, Garrett Cole, and you know they they pick and choose one two players and then throw all the money instead of spreading it out and building a better team. Um, they they their prospects tend to dwindle very don't, don't tend to do well in the majors or at least i can't think of a single prospect that they that has that they've traded i should say um recently or even tried to bring up maybe there are a couple here and there that i'm not thinking of that have blossomed into the star that they were talked about but again it's new york media they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna talk you up like you're the next babe ruth all the time uh whether that's fair or not it's unfortunately just how the New York media is um, the Yankees are still dealing with injuries. So again, they're only, they're six games above 500. They are on, they are four and six in the last 10. Uh, but at the same time, Aaron judge is expected back at some point. Uh, is Nestor back yet? No, he's about to go on a rehab. Uh, so soon. you got your, arguably your, your second best pitcher coming back soon, you know, so, do the Yankees need to do something? Yes, they definitely yes. need to address certain things to keep themselves afloat. But by no means should the this organization be worried. If anything, this will do what they should have done years ago and we make a move on from Aaron Boone and potentially move on from Brian Cashman, who is, let's be honest, living on laurels of years past from not even himself back in the 90s. Uh, early 2000s with um, their other GM, who he re- eventually replaced. I, I don't know his name off the top of my head. And then he had a, you know, they won the one World Series. If they didn't win that World Series in 2009, they they, they were they pretty much did nothing under Cashman in terms of, of championships, which is how it works in New York. You, it's championship or bust. Look how, think about how many different GMs the New York uh, Knicks went through, the New York Giants went through, the New York Jets went through, uh, the Brooklyn Nets. All these other organizations, hockey included, all went through so many more during that whole time Cashman's been there, and all Cashman got was one, one tr- world, cha- uh, world, one World Series championship. The Giants have had two Super Bowls in that time frame. Uh, the uh, uh, the the Nets went to a bunch of. Uh, went to at least two. No, the Nets went to yeah two uh, NBA Finals during that time. The Knicks went to the NBA Finals during that time, and the Knicks haven't been good in a very long time. Go watch our basketball show. You'll you'll I love them, but you'll you'll hear my pain. Uh, so the fact that Cashman's been given such a leash and being able to escape bad uh, uh, by just firing the manager, all because and especially since. 
um, George Steinbrenner passed, Hal does not seem at all motivated to to actually make this team competitive beyond. Sorry, doesn't make seem motivated to make this team a championship contender, just competitive enough to make the playoffs. Because as long as he makes the playoffs, it looks like he, they're trying and it looks like they're doing something. This huge, like that's why there was there was actual genuine concern whether or not Aaron Judge was going to re-sign with them this offseason. Because if he wants a championship, he's there's no guarantee he's going to get one with the Yankees. Now, obviously, the Giants weren't. He wasn't going to win it with most likely either. Uh, but the Mets could have swept him and, and paid him all that money. Uh, at any point, the Red Sox could have. They didn't, but they could have. You know. So, you know, they ultimately he he stayed with the Yankees, which is what they needed. They needed him to stay. He stayed. They just need to actually call up some of their prospects when you have, you know, Josh Donaldson batting, what, two something. He's batting fourth and third sometimes or whatever. He's not bat- He's not where he should be. Either move, cut him, move him, or bench him. Because at this point, he's just hurting the team to the point that they're not even that, that they're not even considering putting in their prospects. Because they don't want to, for whatever reason, they don't want to use their prospects. I don't know. Maybe they're concerned that the, their prospects will actually be shown as bad, and then that means they'll lose value when they're trying to make a trade. And I think that that might be part of it. Because if you look back at, you know, Yankees prospects in past that has come back to bite them, Gary Sanchez, you know, wasn't great with them, and then you know, I mean, they did end up getting uh, what Michael Pineda out of that. Yes, but Michael Pineda once he came to the Yankees, was so inconsistent. So um, the the Yankees do need some sort of help offensively. And they probably could use some help, I would say, in the bullpen. And, you know, but if you were the Yankees GM, what would you do? What prospects are you willing to part with? And let's, let's start with this real quick. Let's assume you're not actually going to get Shohei, right? Like, yeah, of it, course, yeah. At this so point, it, the the GM is talking about it, but the owner's like, "No, I don't want to trade him." So Shohei's off the table. Everyone else is still on the table. Oh, um, and Pete Alonso is off the table because the Mets don't want to trade him for whatever reason. Yeah. I, <laughs> uh, so obviously, there's the names like Randall Grichuk and Cody Bellinger that's been around for since the beginning of the season that started, basically, because the Yankees needed an outfielder, and they just didn't go after one. But uh, a name that has keep been blowing up in Yankees um, media, basically, is Juan Soto. And with the way the Padres have been playing, they might just say goodbye because they sell their whole entire um, uh farm system for Juan Soto and he has not been playing to up to what he was supposed to. So I would like to see the Yankees, if he's on the table, I'm saying if, because you don't know how the Padres are going to do this. If he is, go out and get him. I, there's most prospects. I think I think there's only one, pro, two prospects that are probably not going to be in this trade, and that's Spencer Jones and Anthony Volpe. Unless... I, I don't think the Padres are going to go after another shortstop speaking because of Xander Bogarts being there for so long. So, and you could honestly, if the way the Padres are going to sell, you could probably get a Josh Hader out of this trade too. So Juan Soto and Josh Hader, you get a solidified closer who has been good for years, struggled last year, but has been on fire this year. And you get a Juan Soto who has performed in the big lights before. He's been to the World Series. He won it with the Nationals in 2019, I'm pretty sure. And he was solid throughout that whole entire playoff series. You can see when he faced the Astros, he hit a home run off Justin Verlander. He was just, he's a guy that will fit in perfectly. And if they do it, I'm guessing there's going to be a contract with that deal in. Because I don't think you're going to get Juan Soto as a rental. But other names that they could go after is Chamber Candelario and Lane Thomas from the Nationals. Candelario, last year of this deal, you could re-sign him. He's a third baseman. And Lane Thomas, he has three more years before he hits the free agency, and he's an outfielder. 
Uh, Cody Bellinger, he's solid. Everybody knows Cody. He had the two years, rookie of the year, and then his MVP years. And he's putting up good numbers this year. Um, and if if it ever happens, you can get a Tim Anderson from the White Sox with a Dylan Cease or Lucas Giolito. It's just going to put the Yankees in a rough spot. And it's going to be cashing on the hot seat if they don't do anything this deadline. Now, I, I think the White Sox are intriguing because – uh, Tim Anderson has been struggling, right? Yes. So maybe you can buy him relatively low with Cease at a decent yes. price and hope for the best, right? I mean, he yeah. he can be a good leadoff hitter. Yes. Um, and then you get a potentially very good starting pitcher to uh, yes. who's relatively young. I think he's 20 in his 20s still. 27. 27. And I, he's locked in for a few more years. So, yes. so if I'm and the he was he was second in Cy Young last year, so right. You get a so if I'm the Yankees, I'll take that gamble. Yes. Um, I mean, obviously, if you can go get Juan, so if you could do both of those, that'd be great. And then you oh, have yeah. you have coming in Aaron Judge. You can take your time with Aaron Judge at that point. Um, take your time with with Nestor, and you have yourself a really good team going into the playoffs. Which this yep. team is only two games out of the play in. Yep. Or whatever it's called in, in baseball. <laughs> um, so, I, I I think people are blowing this out of proportion because it is the New York Yankees, and it is championship or bust, and this team is looking bad. But they are fifty and forty four. They are six games above five hundred. I mean, we can come back next week and it, it could be fifty and you know forty whatever th- forty seven. I don't know how many games they have this week. I'm guessing. Um, and then I'll, I'll be I'll I'll be looking like an idiot, but at the same time, it's still relatively early. You are expecting Aaron Judge back. You are expecting Nestor back. You should be. You have pieces to go out and get something. Yes. You have like a million shortstops. Yeah. Oh yes. Trade one. <laughs> Peraza. You got Trey Sweeney. You just drafted a shortstop in your first round this year. And apparently he's the guy that they wanted. So everybody they Trey want is always Sweeney a shortstop. He's a guy you could just give up. Uh, Peraza, he's been in the big leagues last year, and they just called him up because Josh Donalds is on the IL. See what he's worth in this week or week and a half. Uh, if he comes out to be decent, there's his trade value back up, and you could get a Juan Soto and add two top ten prospects into that, and get a Juan Soto and a Josh Hader. But you can't sit in this um, in this deadline and not make any bigger moves. Yankees fans, I'm I might be upset if I don't see a Cody Bellinger or a Juan Soto or a Randall Critchett or uh, uh, any White Sox player like Luis Robert, Robert or someone like that traded to the Yankees because we need bats and. You guys see the mistakes you guys made. You guys didn't even talk to Bryce Harper when he was a free agent, is what he came out and said. You God, guys loved him. wasn't able to even get Correa on this team, or you couldn't even try and get other players even onto this team because you guys don't want to give the money that they want. I I wasn't alive in the ni- in the nineteen nineties, so I don't know how that whole dynasty happened, but. As what I've heard, they spent money and they won championships out of it. You don't think Derek Jeter would have stayed with the Yankees if they weren't winning like that? No, he wouldn't not have most likely. Well, maybe he would because he's a very loyal person. But true, Andy but... Pettit would have left sooner. Yeah. Um, Mo Mariana. may have not stayed. Yeah. Um, well, Mo I'll probably would because of who he is own. as well. But there's certain players you would have lost out on sooner. Yeah. Um, championships definitely help, um, but. Uh, George was not afraid to spend his money. He did. He did it always turn out to be a championship. Absolutely not. Oh, no. but they made the world series a lot. <laughs> Even if they yeah. didn't win the championships, they made the world series a lot. Um, he wasn't afraid to go out and buy a pitcher. He yeah. think about it. These are some pitchers that they got at various points. 
They got David Wells. They got David yep. Cohn, Roger yep. Clemens, Randy yep. Johnson, Mike Mussina, CC Sabathia. This was all of these pitchers who are were Cy Young talented pitchers. I don't know if all of them won it. Um, they nailed it. Talented pitchers who the Yankees got during George Steinbrenner's time just recently since That's I was alive. I, I can't speak of from of, from the uh, from when he took over. I forget when he took over. I think he took over in the in the uh, either late seventies, early eight or early eighties or something like that. I really don't know. Um, but still, since since the nineties, those that's just a handful of people I just threw out, yeah. and those were all, half of those guys are Hall of Famers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you could speak about Alex Rodriguez getting traded from the Mariners to the was it the Mariners or the Rangers? One of those two teams the to the Yankees. Yeah, and to the Yankees, and he turned out to be a very good Yankee. That's the steroid thing that's going to come up with him all the time. But he still came out to be solid, and who cares? It got us a World Series. So I think Howell's a little bit scared to spend his money sometimes. He is, and they don't be scared to spend money on foreign players. You had Hideki, yes. Hideki Matsui up until recently – was viewed as one of the better players in that you got from Japan. I mean, obviously Ichiro is the best for yeah, now. Or until... Masha, nah, Tanaka was up there too with the way he pitched for the right. Yankees. And you know, also Hideki Arabu, who is someone no one talks about, was very important to them in the late '90s, early 2000s during their those their their championship runs. I don't remember yep. exactly when they got him, but he was very important. I don't. I don't. He, you know, he wasn't amazing, but he was a great pickup. They didn't even look at Ot Otani. I mean, part of it was Otani wanted to play West, wanted, Coast, yeah, he, West Coast. He wanted to be close. Uh, he wanted to have a, a larger Japanese population. And there, let's, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, there's not a big Japanese population on the East Coast. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I, I know this sounds weird, fans. but I can't even say I definitely know I've met a Japanese person. I, it's a I weird have. thing to say. I've met yeah. tons of different agents. My wife is Thai. I just yeah. cannot guarantee. I mean, I imagine there has to have been someone I met who is who's Japanese or of Japanese yeah. heritage that I just didn't realize they were. But th th that's my point: is it hasn't been a lot. Even if I have, I'm yeah. I'm a thirty. I'm almost thirty four years old, and maybe I've met a dozen. You know, so yeah, but he also put, oh. is very well known for having a large Japanese uh, population because it's easier to travel from. Japan to the West Coast, just it's quicker. Um, yeah, and Flight. they, you know, yeah. they, they they built up quite a lot in the in in the whole Western Coast. That I was a weird, unnecessary tangent. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is interesting with the Otani stuff because, yes, I would like the Yankees if he's on the board. The Yankees are most motivated. If you guys didn't see what the person said. Yankees are the most motivated to get Otani because Garrett Cole, John Carlo, and Aaron Judge are all in their primes. And if you get a Otani, that helps their primes go up. And if I there's basically nobody on the team I would say is safe if Otani ends up being on on the board, which the Angels seem like they're solidified not going to be putting him on the board. But if Otani, I think there's a chance Otani does come to the East Coast either in a trade this year or in the offseason because of Kodai Senga of the Mets. He signed with the Mets, and he's a Japanese pitcher, and he's probably said some good things to Otani about the East Coast and how they are, and Otani puts people in the seats is what I would say. So who give him the money. So the Orioles could go after him, even though I don't, I don't want to see him in the AL East at all. Like, I mean, it, I'm, it I'm might happen. Honest, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes to the Mets. That's true. Yeah, the Mets, the Mets are willing Mets, to spend money. Right. And if he has a friend in the Mets organization, that's that's great. Do the Yankees have a single Japanese player currently on their roster? Oh, uh, technically the Kyle Higashioka, but he's American. He played for USA, so uh, not really, technically. I mean, I imagine Ichiro could talk to him and tell him about oh, how yeah, Ichiro you know Ichiro too, yeah. loved it, it. To my understanding, loved his time with the Yankees. Um, and again, oh. it, the Yankees have had their fair share of Japanese players, and yeah, you know they are always welcomed. To my understanding, I I don't oh, recall yeah. there ever being uh, 
any issues with New Yorkers booing Japanese players. I mean, I know no. Hideki uh, Irabu had his issues, but um, uh, I'm not sure if it was necessarily with New Yorkers so much as it was just Americans were not fans of foreign players, specifically Japanese players at the time, because they all typically were not good. Uh, that was before Ichiro was Ichiro, before uh, Hideki Matsui was was Godzilla, um, or at the beginnings of the, their times. So, you know, it is, you know, it is what it is with that, but at the same time, they've had Japanese players who have had success. Um, go out and spend though. They have, they've, they haven't been yes. trying to go out and buy them. Um, there's this young guy who's coming up again. I, th- I think there's a pitcher in a few years and then next year, I th- this upcoming off season, I think there's someone as yep. well. Yes, yes. Uh, Yamamoto's coming this or next year, this year coming up. And then Roke Saki, the young 21 phenom pitcher who throws 103 is coming up in two to three years, depending on how they want to, how they want to put him up onto the market. So, you know, take gambles, throw monies at him. That's how you got championships in the past. Um, Baseball is a sport that if you spend money and you spend it correctly, you can win championships. Yes, I understand right now. If you look at the AL East, the Tampa Bay has spent the least and they're in first. But Tampa Bay is an anomaly. Yes. They are. The Orioles they're, are young. They're going to be an expensive team, though. Yeah. With they're the going to have to pay players or they're going to lose players. You could tell the Rays have been struggling recently. They had a 10-game lead. Now they have a one-game lead over the Orioles. And... Yeah. It just keeps dropping, and there's an epic series coming up this weekend, Orioles race. That's going to be nationalized all over TV because it's the top two teams in the East, and they're going to fight it out, and whoever comes out on top is probably going to be the leader of this. And then the Yankees play the Orioles and Rays back-to-back at the end of July. Which is great for the Yankees, especially seeing they should be getting healthier. Yeah, judges – well, Boone made it clear that judge could be back in 10 days, we could be back in two weeks. Who knows? It, it, Judge just actually did a live um, bullpen Batting against right. Nestor. Oh, bullpen, yeah. Against against Nestor. So it looks like they're both going to go rehab together. Obviously, Judge is going to be probably a couple days behind. We don't know yet. But the AL East is going to be the best uh, division this year, basically. So Which is how I had them. I had them as the best. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I had all all the teams winning, uh, having a winning record, and winning, currently yeah. I'm correct. Um, I mean, if you looked at how last year was, that's not really a far, not far fetched. I'm sorry for cutting you off, John. No, you're um, because if you look, the Red Sox were the worst team, and they they weren't even they weren't even that bad. Yeah. Um, the Orioles barely missed out on the 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 wild card. By a little bit, yes. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you you know, you can the Yankees. See, it's funny because the Yankees are nine games back, but it's nine games that they can easily get, right? Oh, yeah. Like, just by winning in division games, they can yes. easily overcome that, and and that's why the Yankees shouldn't be panicking. However, they do need to do some sort of move. Yeah. Go out, get Tim Anderson and Dylan Cease. Those are probably the easiest you can go out and get. And if they don't work out, they're still both relatively young and inexpensive. And it's, it's also part – well, Tim Anderson on the last year of his deal. So if he doesn't work out, he's gone. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. But Dylan Cease, Matt Blake fixes pitching perfectly apparently. Matt Blake is probably one of the best pitching coaches out there. Dylan C struggles, Matt Blake could just fix him up a little bit and he'll be perfectly fine. And I think sometimes some players need a new change of scenery. Like you saw with Aaron Hicks, he left the Yankees, went to the Orioles. What did his good share of good things with them? Sometimes Joey Gallo left the Yankees. He's been solid with the two teams he's been to. So sometimes some players need a new change of scenery, change of fan base, and they either and- succeed or they're just not that great. Now, now I will say not everyone's built for New York. Um, so typically, if you're not able to make it in Chicago, it is difficult to make it in New York. Yeah. But he, at least coming to the Yankees, has other players around him. He doesn't. He's yeah. not the focal point. He's not expected to be the answer. Not just Dylan Cease, but also Tim Anderson. Both of them. Yeah. 
Tim Anderson is would is just expected to hit two like in the you know two fifty to two eighty and get on base. He's not expected to hit those home runs as a Yankee. Will he hit them? Of course he will, because going to Yankee Stadium is just going to he's going to be given more chances to hit home runs because that team is hitter friendly. Yep. So his zero home runs in a year, which is ridiculous to think of for a for for a major league player like him who's not a power power hitter but is known to hit his home runs, is, is yeah. it's unheard of. But if you put him in Yankee Stadium, the guy's going to hit probably three or four before the season ends with the you yeah. know just at Yankee Stadium alone. Um, and again, he doesn't have to worry because the lineup is still very good, especially once Eric Judge does come back. And yes. you that that also could mean someone like Josh uh, uh, Josh Donaldson could start getting you know his mo- you know he 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 might get better because of this as well. You don't know what the chain's going to be. And bringing in Dylan Cease, he's what the he'll be the third best pitcher. Uh, when this year, if he's on them right now, assuming. Nestor comes back. Uh, to him. He would be, yeah, he would be the third best pitcher. Yeah, behind Cole and Rodon. Yeah, he would be the third best, depending on how you see Nestor Cortez coming back from this injury, and what you're going to do with your fifth starter. Either you keep Severino in, or you do Domingo Herman, who has been solid as of recently. So you just and, pick who you want, and Dylan Cease will be we that. Know. Just sometimes not being called the ace is such well, a weight off the shoulders of a player. And honestly, it'll t- it takes a lot of pressure off Dylan Cease because, yes, he's struggling this year, but he's still good. Like, you can't take it away from him. So giving him that third role, if, if the Yankees roll into a playoff series, you see Cole, Rodon, Cease, that's a scary top three pitchers let alone going into a seven-game series when you add Nestor Cortez and then Garrett Cole after them on a four-days rest, there's no chance the Yankees lose a series with those three and Nestor. So I see them going after a starting pitching or pitcher. So, all right. Thank you, John, for joining, as always. You were fantastic. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching, listening. Remember to like, share, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Comment down below. Who, who should the do? You, comment down below. Should the Yankees be panicking? We'll catch you next time. Let's go, Yankees. I don't know. I don't have anything funny to say here. John, you got anything? (laughs) No, I don't got anything. (laughs) Bye. Bye.